So I've had my Cresta Gecko a month now and I figured it'd be a great time to go over and review some of the items I bought and see what has been used, what hasn't and what has been worth the pennies. As well as this I'll be looking at the, her weight, length, any problems I've come across and how I go about feeding her. So in my second haul video you may have seen that I bought a dripper system for my Gecko as they tend to drink dripping water or water off leaves rather than standing water. Now this is quite a hefty item, it's very heavy, it's held up by basically flimsy metal and velcro. However I must say I'm impressed that it hasn't really budged too much and my gecko actually really likes it. The only problem I've found, and this might not be a big problem, it might just be the fact that I don't know how to stop the water running. Basically what happens is I take the lid off, fill it with water, only a little bit, not too much so it doesn't get too heavy, and the water will automatically drip out of the dripper. So I can't just decide to store water in there and then gradually give it to my gecko. So I normally do this maybe once a night or once every two nights where I actually put water in the dripping system for it to come out. Other than that I do of course spray the tank regularly so she does always have water to drink. The plants are a great item that every Crested Gecko needs. She certainly loves to hide in them in the daytime, um, even though sometimes she's not that great at hiding, it's kind of obvious where she is. The hanging plants that basically stick to the glass are quite inexpensive and are, the, are used probably the most out of all the plants. The small canopy plants at the front of the tank are great when you're putting your crested gecko back in the tank and I do occasionally see her down on them. There is one plant that is named the gecko plant so I've of course went and bought it. Um, I haven't actually seen her use it on her own, although she may be doing that in the night because I can't watch it all the time. Then we look at the vines. Now once again when you're placing your gecko back in the tank, these are great because it's a great place to start climbing up the tank so you pop them on there. Um, and I also noticed yesterday when she shed her skin that she rubbed against it to help the skin come off. However there is a problem with one of the vines which is partly buried in the eco earth is it has started to go mouldy which really really sucks. The one item which I can easily say is my favourite, my best and I would probably play double than I did for this item because it's d done so well is the piece of wood. Now I got this from an aquarium shop and so it's actually sort of designed to go underwater which is fantastic in a humid tank because that means it doesn't go mouldy. As well as this, um, she did lose the sticking of, of her feet earlier in the week where she was about to shed and this has been brilliant because it's allowed her to walk up halfway up the tank at least um, and then onto the background without trying to stick to glass. So if there's definitely one thing I would suggest buying, it's a piece of wood that they can climb up in case their feet aren't sticking to the wall. There are two items I would probably go back and change. One is the feeding canopy, although it's good and she does access the food, um, I would probably go back and see if I could get one of those grey sort of magnetic ledges, just because they seem a lot bigger and they're held up by magnets rather than glue. The other thing that I would suggest not buying is Zoomed Mesh. So this goes in between the hydro balls and the substrate. Now I was so disappointed I paid like 15 or 16 quid. The substrate tends to mix with the hydro balls anyway. When it comes to the tank in the background I must say I was a little skeptical at first where it's just polystyrene but more often than not you'll find her, especially in the evenings, at the top, just on this little ledge. And it's especially great when she wants to be high up but her feet won't stick to the glass. So um, that's actually a really great thing about the tank. Feeding is really simple. All you need is a milk lid, Rupashi superfood, a measuring spoon, or any old spoon really, a stick, 
and some water. When it comes to actually feeding her, for a while her feet weren't sticking so she wasn't really getting to the canopy where all the food was so um, sometimes I'd get her out and on the end of the stick where I mix the food I'd get a little bit of food and as you can see she would take it from there. One struggle I have found in the first month of having a crested gecko is humidity. I do spray down the tank with a water bottle twice a day like you should in the morning and at night but it just doesn't register too much as humidity so I have thought about looking into getting a humidifier or a fogger I last weighed her a little under a month ago and she's 23 grams and 18 centimeters in length no, wait a minute, back in there. She is now, she's definitely got her sticky feet back, so she does not want to sit on the scales. Right, she is 23, oh no, wait, she's 27 grams, so she has put on 4 grams in less than a month. Um, I, I don't really know the growth rate of a crest of gecko, so I, I don't know how good or bad that is. Her length is, it looks about eight, 18 and a half centimetres. So thank you for watching, I hope this has been interesting and uh, as always, watch, subscribe, enjoy. Now it's more common for crested geckos to do this and in the wild actually quite a lot of them just don't have tails.